All right, uh, so I'm going to tell a quick story about uh, how a disgruntled campaign staffer, a disgruntled PhD student, and a disgruntled journalist uh, stumbled upon an opportunity to do a little bit of good in the world uh, with data. Uh, and it starts, uh, unsurprisingly, with a couple guys talking about uh, 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 unicorns! Yes! Yes! Hold on, I'm done. Mic drop. Um, I have a very particular type of unicorn, right? Uh, this data scientist unicorn that's uh, this magical person that uh, is an awesome hacker and also has magical abilities in math and statistics and also like deep domain expertise, right? Like doesn't exist. Um, but uh, so these three guys, uh, me, Raid Ghani, and, uh, and Juan Pablo Velez were talking about how we could train more of these folks um, and how we could get them to work on things that matter, like do good in the world rather than, you know, ad clicks or, or spying on Americans, right? Um, and we thought, okay, yeah, we can come up with a way to do this, but to do it, we're going to need, uh, you know, we're going to need a whiteboard. And so we went, we went to a place that, like, where whiteboarding happens, right? 1871, like best, I mean, it cranks out awesome whiteboards, if nothing else, right? Um, and so we started thinking about what, what, what we might be able to create, uh, and we started to refine the idea of, of a lab or a fellowship or something like that, right? And at 1871, around 10 p.m. one night, I get a call from Raid, and he says, guess who I just talked to? This guy. He loves our idea, he wants it to happen, and he wants to, it, it to be big. And so uh, I say, well, well that's unexpected. Um, we're going to need some help. So we, we uh, immediately start talking to all of our friends, right? Um, and all of our friends throughout the city of Chicago, an astrophysicist, um, a, an economist, a, a CS professor, and say, hey, we've got this idea, we've got funding, we'd like to do it, can you help? And they say, yeah, I'll quit my job for that. Um, and six of them sign up to be mentors for this, for this inchoate idea, right? This, this program, and to, to do it full time for an entire summer. And we say, okay, great, we've got some, we've got some help, we're gonna need more ideas though. So we start talking to, to other folks in the city, right? And, and outside, in, in the broader data science community. And they start shuttling in really fantastic ideas about what we might be able to do, how the fellowship should function, how, should we, how we should teach data science, um, what kind of projects we should do. And we start to get an idea of, yes, this is what we're gonna do. Will anyone actually sign up to do it with us? We put up a WUFU form, and in two weeks, we get 600 applicants from all over the world, PhDs in physics and economics and uh, computer science and machine learning from the best universities in the world. Um, we have no idea how we're going to select 600, but eventually through 100 different Skype interviews, we narrow it down to 36 amazing people and we say, we need something for them to do. So we start talking to everyone. Um, do you have any interesting projects? We talk to the White House, we talk to the mayor's office, we talk to the governor's office. And we start to get amazing, amazing project proposals from all over the place. And we narrow it down to 12 really great projects in energy, in education, in disaster response, um, uh, community development, transportation. And we say, okay, we've got projects, we've got people. We need a place for all this to happen. Um, and so we look for, we find a place downtown. We go to Ikea, get some furniture, and uh, you know, buy some couches on Craigslist. And the night before the fellowship starts, I'm looking out at these empty chairs and tables and thinking, is this going to work? <laughs> like, seriously, we've, no, we've, no one's done this before, right? The next day the fellows arrive, all 36 of them, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and we get in a big circle, and every single one of them introduces themselves and tells us why they are here. And as they're going around telling their amazing story, I say to myself, this is going to work. <laughs> These people are amazing. We're going to do amazing work this summer. And we started to. First, we started teaching each other. We had all the fellows write down what they felt comfortable teaching and then put little sticky notes on the things they wanted to learn the most, right? And over the entire summer, we had workshops and learning lunches that all of the fellows were helping round out everyone else's Venn diagrams um, to, to become the unicorn, right? And then they went out and started talking to all those project partners, right? They, they went to the prisons. They went to, uh, you know, the ride-alongs with, uh, garbage truck drivers and, and talking to folks at City Hall, trying to understand the context of the problem that's trying to be solved, trying to understand the way the data are generated and how information translates back into action. And then they come back to the space and say, okay, how do we map that human action back into some sort of mathematical model? We spend a lot of time whiteboarding, again, awesome whiteboards, right? Um, and writing out in all of these, you know, really great sophisticated e equations, how we might be able to make the world a better place through data and mathematics. Um, and then uh, the fellows sat down next to each other and really started cranking out the code, right? Trying to figure out how can we translate the models we figured out and the data that we've got into an actionable insight. 
right? And what happened in this process since we were all together is fellows started helping each other out across projects. Everyone ended up having a secondary project in their 20% time, and new projects started popping up. And by the end of the summer, we developed models that would predict heart rate, uh, heart attacks for North Shore Hospital. We'd predict uh, models that were helping Mesa Public Schools figure out which students were likely to undermatch for high, for. Uh, for college. We were saving the state millions of dollars in energy efficiency uh, uh, savings. We were helping cities better respond to disasters. And not just that. In February this year, I was at the World Bank, and I was talking with uh, someone from the um, uh, minister from the presidency's uh, office in Mexico. And we were talking, and she said, oh, you do data science for social good? Two of our biggest rock stars in data science right now in Mexico are two of the fellows that did your program last year. We want to work with you. We want to learn what you in Chicago are learning. And I realized that something was emerging, right? All of, this, all of this wonderful activity in this city that had been given birth to the Chicago School of Architecture and the Chicago School of Economics and a bunch of different Chicago schools was also creating a new, a new thing. You can call it the Chicago School of Data that is teaching the world how to use data in the service of humanity. And the teachers are all these amazing big brains and big hearts that took a kernel of idea and ran with it and did the really, really hard work to turn data into insights that make the world a better place. And yes, there was some data and, and yes, there was some science, but fundamentally, what happened was mostly a social phenomenon because in the end, it's not the agglomeration of a whole bunch of big data sets that makes the world a better place. It's the accumulation of small but significant human actions. Thank you.